Ta-da. All right. So, what do we got here? Well, I'm going to put together this uh, drop-in fuel pump module to kind of show what the premise is, what, what all it does. Um, break it down for you guys, so if we generate some more excitement. Uh, because it's doing things that nothing else in the market can do at this point. First, we have this bucket contraption. What in the world is going on here? This is a, uh, a 3D printed material. It's nylon, 6,500 PSI. I mean, I, I can really wail on this bucket, right? Mm. No squeezing. A little forearm in there you know I can pull so we have this bucket it houses TI automotive pumps in a new way uh, those high-flowing little suckers that uh, everybody wants to run um, some of them re referred to as the Hellcat pumps and so what do we do we take this bucket uh, the beauty of a round hole is you can in fact stick something that's not round through that hole. So we can go through the hole in the GM tank with this bucket, uh, finagle it down in there, uh, putting, feeding the lines in first. The lines can be installed afterwards as well. And then we come back and we take the heart of the system. Which is this fuel pump manifold and we can drop that down in the bucket so what's going on with this thing all right take the bucket out of the way for a second we'll talk through this and we'll show how it all goes together we've got this module which consists of triple wall bros as stated all right and uh, this manifold and they're all clamped in place real nice we've got black anodized and stainless hardware um, the dowels here are how we engage with the bucket there's three of those so here's the manifold there is an integrated check valve and this bad boy it's a parker valve real robust thing it's it's made to handle you know hydraulic pressures up to thousands of psi so 75 psi is no big deal check valve and then we also have this jet pump feed to run the jet pumps on the front of the bucket we've got a y block we split it off and uh we use a, an xrp orb fitting here to just screw right in there all of these hoses by the way are xrp racing us made um always they are in tank ethanol alcohol compatible methanol as well um, and this braid is their in-tank braid so they, they offer these hoses in a variety uh, of formats but uh, what's really cool about it is it has this great bend radius so um, you know you can do stuff like this which is you'll see how it goes together um, shortly here but uh, it, it, that's a dash 12 hose with dash 10 ends on it. Another thing that's really cool XRP does is uh, allows for mix matching uh, ends. So anyway, we've got these three pumps and we've got another, we've got this dash 12 hose with an ORB out from the manifold. Um, sorry. Yeah, there we go. And uh, it feeds this hat. So then we have, we come around here and we've got this hat and the hat has multiple things going on. So right here we have a dash 10 outlet for pressurized fluid coming right up from underneath here where that other end of that ORB goes in. And then we have this pressure relief valve, right? So that is a pressure, uh, the fuel pressure relief that will come set at 100 psi it's another parker valve these are very uh well made um only the best materials hardened steel tool steel seats for the uh the poppets and um they should hold up really well for us so 100 psi on that bad boy dumps right through this hole here so it's right back down into the bucket 
uh, if you do you know encounter a situation where you're breaking 100 psi up top again we've got a dash 8 return I've got this one plugged off uh, it's not required with this setup we can run this setup returnless but uh, then also I've got an M10 by 1.5 uh, o-ring face seal port for the uh, GM fuel pressure sensor so ultimately we integrate the fuel pressure sensor right there we can either run our return style setup um, and well just get away with that I guess or do away with that pressure transducer or we can run returnless keep that thing going and utilize a really cool kit from Vaporworks to integrate with factory uh, fuel pump control module vehicles um, more about that in just a minute so back to where we were We've got this bucket all right and these pumps got to go in it so I've already got everything kind of built so the buckets already in the tank and then we just got to work this bad boy down in there you could also do this without this hose attached, but work this down in there and clock it just right and bam, we're set in there, okay? So now I've got a bucket being fed by these twin jet pumps, right? That tie in at my Y block right up here. I'm not going to tighten these all the way, but you get the gist. Okay, these feed, these jet pumps that keep this bucket overrunning, you'll see in the functional video, keep the bucket overrunning uh, when all the pumps are uh, full blast and everywhere in between. So that's that's the beauty of this. Okay, so um, jet pumps incorporated to overrun this bucket, something that's not configured this way with these three pumps. Um, really, it's a packaging issue. So um, what I've come up with here really maximizes the uh, the space I'm, we can we can work with in the tank and uh, creates a nice um, you know greater than two liter volume in this bucket uh, to have some fuel on hand um, when you get into the throttle so I've got that in place we use these really beefy Lee Springs Made in the U.S., of course. All this stuff here, U.S. made. So, springs, they go on the rods for the hat. And then we're just going to wrap this bad boy around. So. And there. Now, obviously, this hose is in the tank underneath the edge of it. Um... It's set up to have clearance. Um, this is the installed state. There's there's some travel as there is in the factory module. And, and that's what you have. So a closer look at the jet pumps, just to get a better appreciation of what's what it looks like inside the bucket. You know, here we have one of the jet pumps with the pressure feed with an orifice and your siphon feed here. And it's screwed into the bucket with a nut on the inside um, and the two of those are aimed to keep the bucket overflowing at all times so, so there's two pickup lines for siphoning with the jet pumps one of them here shown with the uh, I believe it's well I don't know the standard number but the SAE um, quick connect fitting in an 11.8 millimeter variety uh, for the factory CTSV transfer line Again, we've got this nice bin radius, and we can do all kinds of things with this, and it's trainable. So uh, that, that connects to the factory pickup line, and then we've got this other pickup for the same side of the tank as uh, the module, and it just goes to the back corner, so it's always drawing from um, you know fuel under G-forces. So I totally forgot to talk about electrical, and uh, you know, go figure, mechanical guy leaves electrical out. Sorry, all the double E's out there. Um, so, yeah, we're just using the same kind of pass-through as the other ALM hats available. Um, this bulkhead, uh, well, not bulkhead. Um, it's an SAE port, sorry. 
Um, I just have one stuck in here to show concept. Uh, obviously, we'd have six wires for a V to feed the three pumps, eight wires for anything Zeta platform. So, also want to say that as you see the configuration here, this is for CTS V Gen 2. Um, there's another bucket config to use the other level sensor. So this does this bucket does use the OEM level sensor from the CTSV hooks right in here. Um, there's a Zeta bucket that that does the same for the Zeta level sensor uh, sending unit. This is Carl's controller. So Carl at VaporWorks, a uh, really cool guy. He's got all kind of knowledge about the factory setups and uh, what we've got here is wiring to hook up this slave controller. So what the slave controller does, it's in the ESD bag here. Um, it's this little unit he makes. 400 bucks for this whole bag here, uh, wiring, slave controller. What this thing does is it takes your factory FSCM signal and it takes uh, a map referenced um, comparator inside here so it comes with the lead to tie into your map signal up under your hood uh, it's got an op amp in there so it's not going to affect the signal going to the ECM and uh, essentially when you hit a certain amount of boost uh, which can be controlled here uh, this controller comes in and gives the exact PWM pulse width modulation signal to the other two pumps that are inactive in most cases so one pump runs all the time, the FSCM drives it, it's pulling 20 amps, wide open throttle, that's all the FSCM can handle. The other two are controlled by this bad boy. So beefy wire, uh, the, the lead to tie into your maps here, um, a fused, fused setup here, uh, really cool uh, packaging he's got here. So. Uh, He's been selling these a while to uh, to drop in and, and, and run pumps in various situations, um, but VaporWorks, yeah, good guy. So that's the electronic side. Run it, run it another way if you'd like. Run it off relays. Run it off of a hob switch for the two uh, backups or uh, two secondary pumps if you want to, and uh, run a return style setup. But the whole thing here is factory integration, returnless uh, system, and uh, OEM style manners where you can feel free to, to slam on the throttle with all varying levels of fuel in the tank um, and no longer worry about going lean. So, so yeah, so those are the two configurations available currently. Zeta Platform, SS Sedan, G8, GTO, I believe, uh, Gen 5 Camaro. Uh, I've got a Gen 6 Camaro V3 unit sitting over here to do next. It's just reconfiguring things and, um, you know, incorporating the different EVAP uh, pass through etc on the the next gen but uh, electrical so we're using eight-way GT 280 stuff uh, just like what we use currently uh, a four-way version for the factory CTSV stuff this is your eight-way version that will be coming you know with these units attached here